end of February 2022. That was the day when I first downloaded Genshin Impact and may I say my life definitely changed. Not sure if it was for the better or worse. Since it's my one year anniversary playing the game, I decided to talk about things that I wish I knew last year when I first started playing this game. Hopefully you're gonna find these tips helpful and if not, honestly just enjoy my ridiculous commentary. That's also an option. The way I found out about Genshin Impact was that at the time I was looking for a game that I could just play with my friend online. And so what I did was simply type in Google 10 best games that you can play with your friends online. And for some reason, Genshin was like number one on pretty much every single one of them. I hate to break this to you, but like Genshin is not a co-op game. It's really not. It's so surprising to me because it is advertised that one. That also explains why I am on NA server because when I first started playing, I thought that, okay, since this is a co-op game, I think I would like to play with players that speak English so that it's a little bit easier to communicate. Number two. Yep not watching character build guides. I will admit, till this day, I do not read any talents or passives or descriptions of anything. <laughs> I just, I don't really understand what's going on, so I just simply prefer when someone else explains that to me and it's much easier for me as a viewer to consume it. And because I didn't watch anything that caused me to have really weak characters, even though when I first started playing I had both Shincho and Bennett, which are considered one of the best, if not the best, four stars in the entire game. But they were so weak because I had no idea how to build them and how to use them. Going with that, I, because I didn't read what Talon said, I also never really leveled them. And once I did finally start leveling them, I started also leveling up talents that are actually kind of useless for certain characters and that's why some of them have normal tags leveled up even though they never really use them <laughs> but i guess you learn as you go and actually speaking of talents when i was unlocking all of the talent and artifact domains i actually had no idea what this is i was just unlocking them and i was like oh okay something like this exists. Even better, when I was looking at artifact domains, I only saw the flowers and <laughs> you know this is again the problem of me not reading any descriptions. I for some reason thought that you can only farm flowers <laughs> in certain artifact sets. And I remember I was asking myself like, how do these YouTubers have like other pieces like feathers and sands? Like where did they get them from? Do bosses drop them? Because I knew that bosses can drop artifacts. And I was like, ah, oh, but like, how do they farm them? I don't understand. Like it just shows me a flower. Like how do I get other artifacts? This is so stupid now that I think about it. <laughs> and then, you know, one day I finally decided to just try out the artifact domain and see what it's about. And I realized that you can actually get different things than just flowers. <laughs> And going with domains, I would suggest you start using resin as fast as possible. Even if you don't actually need anything at the moment, I would say to always try to use it in some way. My recommendations, especially for beginner players, is to just farm various types of talent box because these are just necessary to build any characters. I think that also building up talents, it's kind of like free quote unquote damage upgrade for your characters that doesn't require artifacts. It's something that anyone can do. So I would focus on talent box. I'm not even mentioning artifacts because I think that's like a general rule of thumb for Genshin players is to never farm any artifacts until you hit AR45. For those of you who don't know, basically at AR45, you finally can unlock the highest level domains which give you best artifacts. And also you have the guarantee of getting at least one gold artifact every single time you do a run. So I would suggest waiting until AR45, especially not using any fragile resins. Keep every single one of them that you get. And then finally you can start 
building up your characters with good artifacts. So at this point, you might already know that, okay, I, I know how to build certain characters. I know that I have to farm talent books. I know that I can start farming artifacts at AR45, but who, who should, should I, I even build? build? Every single YouTuber that I watch that talks about guides and building characters also talks about the so-called meta. They will actually make tier lists of strongest characters that they would even consider must pull and they will tell you like, oh, you really have to pull Zhongli, for example. This is like a necessary character. You have to have him on your account. And I don't know actually who. Uh, Albedo? Forget about Albedo. El let's pretend Albedo doesn't exist. You know what I will say to you? <sighs> Who cares about meta? Like seriously, play characters that you just want to play. You may like them because of their personality, because of their looks, because of their playstyle. When I found out about all of these Genshin guides and just in general the Genshin side of YouTube, I fell into meta hole so fast. I was so obsessed with only building characters that are meta. I was looking at all of my four star characters and I was like, oh my god, like none of them are meta. I only have like Bennett. So I desperately built Bennett. And even though I, I love Bennett as a character, so I would probably build him anyway. But my initial intentions were in right. I only built him because I heard that he's meta. And that's not the approach that you should have. Play with characters you want to play. And if you believe that, oh, a character can only be good if they're meta, that's not true at all. Every character can be good. What actually makes the character good is the artifacts that you use on them. You honestly can make, I don't know, like Dory and Xin Yan that are considered one of the worst characters in the entire game and make them really, really powerful. So, Play with characters you want to play, don't care about meta. And finally, connecting to the previous advice, pick two characters out of every single one that you currently have on your account, that you like, that you want to build, and just focus on them. Think of them as your investment into future teams. Especially because at the beginning you're probably not gonna have a lot of primo gems, you're not gonna have a lot of resources, you're not gonna have enough resin, you have very limited amount of everything. Be as greedy as you possibly can with them, give them only best stuff, and don't even bother building like other characters. Really, it's not worth it to build every single one of them, it's a little bit of a waste of every single material that you have. Then what you could do is to just look at all of the 5 star characters that there are in the game. Look at their playstyle, look at the elements they're using, look at their passives, weapons that they possibly can use, teams that they can be in, and then pick two of them that you would like to ideally have in the future. And just focus on getting them for now. There will be multiple characters who are gonna have their reruns and new characters are gonna have their banners, but really, there is no point in trying to get every single one of them. Pick like two five star characters that you would ideally like to have within the next six months. Pre-farm for them, save up primo gems to get them. And then after six months, you can be a bit more wild with other characters. Also, what I would suggest is that once you pick those two five star characters that you have, look into those guides that I mentioned earlier. What kind of teams they could have and look at your account maybe you already have some support characters for those five star characters because what we're aiming to do is to have in total eight well-built characters we need to have two separate teams that can deal damage in spiral but that's basically the end goal but i wouldn't stress about it just yet it's like in the far future what we want to have at the beginning focus on two four star characters and then two five stars and then build your teams up from there i guess the last thing i just want to add is truly just have fun in the game. I think that Genshin community can get a little bit too intense with some things. I think that people sometimes miss the entire point of this game and want it to become something that it's not and it's probably never going to be. So try to take things a little bit with a distance, educate yourself on what to do, and again, just have fun. 